Well, hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. Andy here, and today we're gonna to talk a little bit about my 2019 Philmont loadout. So stay with me, sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, and let's dive right in. Well, so here's everything laid out that uh, I plan to take um, after our first shakedown hike to Philmont. So this list will has already changed, um, but um, it will continue to adapt and change as we continue to um, go through some more training hikes and and really kind of dial in on on what gear um, I plan to take um, for our our troop trip to um, the Cimarron Valley in New Mexico to the Philmont Scout Ranch. So here's, uh, here's how I have it all laid out. I've got um, my um, packed clothing um, that I will be carrying in my pack um, additionally um, laid out over here. I've got um, gear that I'll be wearing um, set out separately so I won't count that in my base weight. Um, but let me run through a little bit of, of how I have this set up. Um, so far after, after trial number one. So I will be taking, um, sleeping clothes. Okay. So I've got those here. Um, these are icebreaker merino wool, um, and some, um, thick <laughs> wool socks for, uh, my overnight. So those will be my, my primary sleeping gear. Um, I can use that on, on colder days if, if needed as a base layer to hike in, but I'd really prefer, um, not to do that. So my my plan is um, try and keep those as clean and dry as possible, and just um, use them for sleeping. So and that'll also prolong um, my down bag um, from you know dirt, debris, and things like that. So um, that's that's my my sleeping gear. I've got um, a pair of ex officios, um, the sport mesh um, boxers. So I'll be wearing those. That's the the extra pair. Um, I'll have an extra long sleeve shirt, um, just a, a Columbia uh, long sleeve, um, and and pants. So I tend to hike in pants a little bit more. Um, they're they're lighter weight, they're thinner, um, so they're not real heavy stuff. Um, I just that's that's my go-to. Um, so I'll have a, of a pair of those, uh, and that is something that I'm I'm debating because what I'm wearing uh, will be convertible pants. So I have a option to go to shorts if I want to. Um, and I've got a, a pair that, um, I could bring a second pair of convertibles possibly, or just bring the, uh, the standard long pants. So that's that. I've got a, a fleece top, just a pullover. I've got an extra pair of darn tough socks. Okay. I've got a buff that I will take with me. Um, I've got some, um, wool glove liners. Um, that I'll use just as my, my basic gloves. I'll have my puffy, my mountain hardware uh, jacket. And um, and this is still up for debate too. I've got my, my rain suit. So these are Marmot precips, um, top and bottom. Um, so I will have those. I, I'm considering whether um, it makes sense to have uh, something like a rain kilt um, to bring, um, which is lighter weight, smaller, um, but you get into the issues of if you're wearing pants, for example, um, rain kilt's not going to um, give you as much protection and your pants will get wet. Um, if you go to more of a shorts option, the rain kilt um, can be great and, and can, you know, you go from something that's probably 10, 12 ounces to, you know, two or three ounces. So um, quite a substantial savings in weight, but depends on the situation. So that's something I'm wrestling with. Um, the other thing I'm wrestling with is um, right now I've got a pair of um, camp shoes and these are uh, my water shoes that uh, are Merrell's and I brought these to Boundary Waters and loved them because they were very comfortable to hike in um, for the shorter distances but they're all completely mesh um, and these things barely absorb water at all so if they get soaked 
you dump them out and they're good to go. So um, I'm considering bringing those for camp shoes and river crossings. So, um, you know, if we get to uh, streams and whatnot that, that we have to traverse that are deeper um, than my Solomon's. Um, now these are, you know, Gore-Tex um, hiking boots, but the drawback to those is if you're crossing something that's knee deep, that's not going to keep the water out of, out of your boots. So then you get into a situation where you've got Gore-Tex boots that are wet on the inside. They can take a lot longer to dry out than potentially just switching into something like that, throwing the, tying the boots to the outside of the pack and you cross a stream and then switch back and hang those on the outside of your pack and those things dry so fast. And then you've got those two for walking around camp. They're a little more comfortable. Obviously, if I've been hiking in those for, you know, 10 to 20 miles um, each day. So that I'm going back and forth a couple. I've gone back a few different times already of how I want to do that because I don't want to bring extra weight if I don't have to. And the other option is I just take these and they get wet or I go to um, the other Merrells that I have, um, the Moabs that, you know, I hike through them, they get wet and I keep hiking in them and they're also my camp shoe. That's, that's a possibility. So we'll see how that evolves. Um, I've got the uh, Chair Zero uh, from Helinox. So I do plan on bringing a chair. It's about a pound. So it's, it's not a huge penalty, but it is a penalty. Um, I'm just still leaning in that direction over a seat pad or something else. Um, I will have extra Ziploc bags of some kind um, that are there. I've got my, my water um, solution here. So I've got uh, a three liter platypus that um, will go in my pack. I'll have a smart water bottle um, this is the, uh, I believe the 700 milliliter. I may take the liter bottle, um, with the cap and just switch that out. I've got, um, my knock bags and my Sawyer squeeze and chemical treatment, um, drops so that I've got a couple different options of, um, producing water. And since I'll be in a group, I'll bring the larger kit. If I was going solo, I might just bring the smart water bottle and the Sawyer, not need all the extra stuff um, with the platypus. So I like to hike with the platypus because I feel that it's it's much easier to, to use the bite valve um, than even the, the smart water bottle. But um, I also like it just um, where it hangs um, high in my back, in my pack, that uh, it's easy for me. And I'm, I'm used to that. So... You know, maybe over time, um, that'll that'll change too. But um, that's kind of the setup as we look right now. We'll see if that changes before. And then I've got just a, a smart wool um, merino um, beanie to bring for colder mornings um, or to sleep in, um, depending on on what the weather looks like. Um, speaking on clothes in general, that's something that you know I've. I've given a lot of thought to, and, and I'm still back and forth. I've, I've tried to get as much information as I can from others who've been there on, on just what type of clothing, because I've seen everything from, from way more minimal than this setup to, you know, bringing much more, um, from a concern of, of getting cold. So Based on what I could find, this is kind of where I am right now. The the further we go through and the more information that I that I gather, maybe this will change. But for now, this is what I'm looking at. Um, uh, you know, I may switch out um, this pullover. I've got another fleece that's uh, a slightly, you know, an ounce or two heavier, but quite a bit warmer um, that I might bring instead. I, I'm also considering not bringing it at all um, and just using the puffy as my insulating layer and the uh, rain suit as wind block and, and weather protection. So on a, on a cold day or cold night, um, you know, where you're in a long sleeve shirt, long pants, you can go to a puffy jacket on top and the windbreaker on top of the puffy to again, lock in some heat and you've got a wool hat and gloves. Is that going to be enough? You know, that's, that's the part I'm, 
I'm wondering. Uh, temperatures can get down into the 30s, even in the middle of the summer at the at altitude. So um, this is the setup that I'm looking at right now. We'll see if, if that gear changes over time. So in addition, then I've got um, my compass, I've got my headlamp, and then I've got kind of my, my food kit, um, which is going to go through some changes. So I'm not sure exactly what that's going to look like. But as of right now, I wanted to have a cup and a bowl and um, a spoon, fork, spork uh, option. And then I'm also going to have um, a pocket stove kind of set up and a lighter. So I can make coffee in the morning. Um, we're going to have crew gear um, that is going to cook the food for everybody for, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Those kind of meals are going to be taken care of. But um, you want to boil a cup of, uh, a cup of coffee in the morning, um, you're going to need to bring your own stuff to, to do that kind of stuff. So I do have a, a basic kit. We need to have a bowl. I'm going to bring a cup and a bowl of some sort. Um, I just think it'll probably be different from this. And this is what I had in Boundary Waters too. So, um, okay. In addition, I've got my, my toiletry kit. So this is going to be, um, toothbrush, uh, toothpaste. Um, my first aid kit is also going to be in that. So it's just going to be a basic, basic thing. It's got some band-aids, um, you know, um, some neosporin, some, you know, very, very basic kind of stuff um, for blisters, um, that kind of thing. But small, and I wanted it to be self-contained so that it's really easy to throw. I'll have a, a single st stuff stack, stuff sack, easy for me to say, um, that I'll throw that and anything that could be smellable um, in the bear bag. So that'll definitely go in there. Um, but if there's anything else that, that needs to go in too, um, you know, that'll have chapstick and a little tube of sunscreen and probably a little tube of bug spray. I'll go into that kit. Um, but, uh, and then I'll have a, a small utility kit, which will just have some extra cordage. Um, it will have uh, maybe some duct tape, you know, a couple just utility items that, that may come in handy. And I'm going to try and keep that as small and as lightweight as possible. And then um, uh, some TP that I'm going to take also. So um, that'll kind of be all together in, in the same section of the bag. Um, I don't know if I'll bring a trowel um, just because we are going to be in a crew of, you know, 9 to 12 um, people. And there's going to be uh, probably six or seven of them. Um, throughout the group is is my guess. So as we go through our meetings and we coordinate some of that stuff, you know, sometimes it's uh, it's something that you can do without. It, everybody um, is going to stick together and everybody's going to have one kind of seems a little bit overkill. But um, again, as we get more information, as we go through some more shakedown hikes, that may change. So that's kind of my... Um, my basic utility stuff. I will have a few things for filming. So I'll have a backup battery. I will have a lightweight um, solar panel that will help charge the battery. And then the battery will charge my devices. So I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to bring to film just yet. If I'm only going to bring my phone um, or if I'm going to bring a GoPro or something like that in addition. Uh, again, I want to kind of keep it as light as possible. In Boundary Waters, I brought both. Um, and, and another battery, and um, it was uh, not so bad, but you're not carrying the weight nearly as much as you are um, planning to be in Philmont because you, you throw everything in the canoe and you do a lot of traveling by canoe. So the hiking distances are, are much shorter. Um, then we get into some of my sleeping stuff. Um, I'll have a, a ground cloth um, that's just a polycryo sheet. Um, I will have my... Uh, Big Agnes, that is my Fly Creek 2 um, ultralight. Um, I don't know the sleep system uh, or setup yet with the other dads that are going, if I'm going to be solo or whether we're going to be um, paired off or whether my son's going to be with me. I'm not sure. So as of right now, that's um, what I'm bringing. I would prefer to bring a hammock, um, but that's not allowed at Philmont. So I'm stuck with tents, and that's what, what I'm going to look at look at. So I've got that and then I've got a little snug pack 
um, inflatable pillow and I've got my Thermarest and that's my X-Therm pad. So that'll be my, my sleep system with um, my down. This is my 20 degree um, enlightened equipment. Um, that is the Enigma. So it has a closed foot box um, quilt. So I will be bringing that. I'm thinking that should be plenty, but again, um, we'll be taking that out for a few more uh, trial runs just to make sure um, I don't bring anything else. I, if temperatures are getting down into the 30s, um, as long as the rating seems to, to hold on this, a 20 degree bag should be plenty um, warm. And I've got, um, you know, the, the wool sleep um, sleep clothes that I'm going to have, and I'll have other clothes that I can wear if it's a really chilly night you know, throw on a, a puffy or, you know, a fleece if I bring that. So, and then, um, that'll be my sleep system. And, and I forgot that I'll also bring a, some kind of tripod just for, for filming with the electronics. Um, and then my personal stuff that I'll be bringing, this is, is just kind of a basic loadout right now. Um, I'll have a pair of convertible pants and this is a Columbia, uh, featherweight. It's a, it's a lightweight titanium, um, line shirt. It, I love it because it's super lightweight, um, much lighter than the other Columbia shirt that I have. And I wore that to Boundary Waters and found it to be extremely comfortable. Um, ex officio, um, the sport mesh um, box briefs and darn tough. I'll have my um, my Casio Pro Trek with me also. So that'll have um, barometer, altimeter, um, compass, um, you know, uh, in a temperature. So some things that, that are useful tools to have, um, just when you're out in the middle of nowhere and, uh, and then a, a pocket knife I'll have on me at all times. That is, um, Benchmade bug out. Love that because it is, um, very quality blade and yet extremely lightweight. So perfect for, for this kind of adventure. Um, so that's my, my setup as I see it right now. And then, um, my, my last two things, um, looks like in the back is, uh, my black diamond. Um, those are the Alpine carbon, uh, cork and the, um, granite gear that is the crown X 60. So that is a mass drop version, um, collaboration with granite gear, um, that was done after the release of the crown two. 60 and has a couple slight tweaks um, and adjustments um, like one of the things that was uh, people were really clamoring about on the crown two is can you make the lid which is detachable um, can you convert that into a um, a day pack so they've changed kind of the the um, clips on it so that you can take the belt actually remove the belt from the pack and attach it to that and you've got a small pack that then you can carry on day hikes which will come in handy in Philmont because there will be a couple hikes depending on on which course we decide um, where we may set all of our gear up at camp and then take a day pack and go you know uh, summit one of the mountains and then come back and camp that night so you want to have a small pack of just essentials um, but I don't want to have to bring a separate backpack so if I can use that and, and have both a day pack option and my main uh, hiking pack, then perfect. That's going to work great. So, so that's it. Um, if, uh, if I've forgotten anything, if you guys have any suggestions, I would love to hear it. Again, I'm kind of in the stage of just acquiring as much information as I possibly can to make the best choices possible. Um, but this is, this is the, the loadout, um, as of now, uh, coming up at the end of the year, 2018 for our, uh, 2019 hike. So, uh, the next thing I do is, uh, why don't I pack all this stuff up? I'm going to throw it in the pack and let's weigh it. See what we come so to. For me, I just use a, uh, basic trash compactor bag, uh, you know, the thicker, more durable, and uh, I'm not using a stuff sack for my um, my sleep gear, so this is going to provide that um, waterproofing for that. Um, and then I'll have something like these stuff sacks 
uh, for my clothes. So this will be my, my sleep kit and this will be my spare clothes. I could use Ziploc bags. I could use the dry bags that I've got. Um, but anything that I want to protect from um, downpours, I'm going to put in there just as an extra protection. I do have a, um, a rain cover that can go over the bag, but you know none of those are perfect. You're still going to get um, rain that will you know, go down your back um, and, and get part of your pack wet. So having something like this to be an extra level of, of waterproofness um, to me matters. So that's how I'm going to go ahead and stuff my sleep gear and then my my clothes and then anything that I do not need to worry about um, keeping waterproof um, I'll put outside of that bag so I'll have my my rain gear on the outside I'll probably put my puffy and uh, my fleece inside this just to keep them dry um, but they'll be on the top so they're more accessible and then some of the other gear um, I'll either push around the side of the compactor bag um, depending on if it's not needed it'll be towards the bottom um, if I need it in a pinch it will be um, more towards the top so all right so that's it packed up so I'm gonna leave out the uh, the poles and uh, what I'm going to wear, and we'll go ahead and, and get that on the scale and uh, see what that weighs. Well, there you have it. This is uh, 22 and a half pounds for all that gear. So we're going to have food and water, and I'll have a canister of fuel that will be in there too. Um, so there will be some added weight. Uh, my goal was to try and get this as close to 20 pounds as possible. So we'll have to go back through the list and, uh, and see if there's any way to shave a little bit of weight. Now one thing too is, is I'm carrying the entire tent and if I am splitting with somebody then there's a possibility that um, I've got the tent uh, fly and somebody else has the the body um, and the poles or, or some combination so that um, you know it's only a two pound tent roughly but uh, there might be a pound of savings um, you know just from splitting that tent up so and then go through all the other luxury items that I do have and uh, figure out what else can go so that's that's it in a nutshell well thanks for joining me today and uh, taking a peek at uh, what I keep in my kit and uh, we'll uh, continue to evaluate uh, all everything that I've got and, and see if I can continue to cut weight what do I need what do I not need what changes do I make this is only after shakedown number one we've got at least one or two others that are that are planned for later in the spring and we'll continue to um, tweak this to get it to exactly what we want it to be for our, our Philmont track. So if you've got any uh, comments or, or thoughts, suggestions of, of things that, that might be better that I should take a look at, please feel free to, to put those down below. And remember, like, share, subscribe, comment. I appreciate it all. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Be well.